Hey, Lee, good afternoon to you. We're coming up on uh, 516. I thought I would start with this headline. Today, with a high of 47 and a low also in the 40s this morning out at the airport, Portland, now 21 consecutive days of below normal temperatures. That means if you average out the high and the low, what the mean temperature is for each day has been below normal for three solid weeks. Now, let me tell you, for any time of the year, whether you're talking a warm spell or a cold spell, 21 consecutive days is a pretty impressive streak. And although I do show some warming, especially this coming Thursday, if you look at the lows and the highs combined that I'm projecting, it's possible we'll go through this entire week and add more days to this consec consecutive streak. I mean, if this would get up and hit 28, 29, 30, that's something you really hardly ever see. We will be approaching an entire month's worth of weather with every single day in the same department, below normal. Now, the steady rain has ended, as I'm sure you now realize, looking out your, uh, your front door, so to speak. Scattered showers continuing to be a possibility this evening. And there are some fairly hefty showers out there yet. So, yeah, plants now you could still see some of that rain, but the steady rain threat has ended. I want to stick with this uh, temperature uh, <clears throat> trend here for a moment. So, read the headline. Outlook below normal temps through the rest of this month and also through mid-April. Right now, it's a pretty confident call that the rest of March will continue to be, not maybe every single day, but on average below normal. And becoming an increasingly confident call that the first two weeks of April will continue that below normal trend. There are signs right now at the back half of April will start to moderate or warm up closer to seasonal averages, which by then would be well up into the 60s, of course. Um, the National Weather Service outlook, most recent that I saw, actually projects that May could be above normal. It doesn't mean that that's going to kick off some tr horrendously hot summer. That's just the way the outlooks are right now. And what you're looking at right here, don't misunderstand this. This is the European model for April 5th. This is one single day, April 5th. The European model shows potential of another cold weather maker dropping in. See that <clears throat> highlighted blue line? That's the 540 pressure height. Remember that the, what we call the polar jet stream flow is 546. So we are north of the polar jet. The polar jet would be down here in southern Oregon. That just means that we are north of the cold boundary, which means we're obviously in. And you can see the darker colors of, of lower pressure heights. This would definitely be very, very chilly air for the fifth day of April if this comes true. But, you know, if we were projecting more normal temperatures, you probably wouldn't see anything like this on any of the models. So that's just another clue that there will be multiple, gee, it's really chilly out for this time of the year, weather fronts dropping in between now and possibly all the way through the first two weeks of April. Okay, I've had some of you chime in wondering, where are we precipitation-wise? <clears throat> Remember yesterday when I talked about the steady rain that would come in this morning, and, and yesterday it looked like it would start breaking in showers maybe as early as 1 o'clock in the afternoon. That didn't happen. The front really slowed, and we had steady rain in the mid-afternoon, as we now know. But I also mentioned yesterday that I thought maybe the, the weather models were underperforming, that we would get well over an inch of rain. Well, get this. Since the rain started last evening, <clears throat> pardon me, 1.38 inches out of PDX. Impressive, right? We haven't had a 24-hour period like that. There was a one... There was a two-day period the first week of January that produced over an inch of rain, but otherwise you have to go back to December. So it's been a while since we've had a really good soak like this. And just since midnight, 1.15 inches sets a new record for today's date, the 13th day of March out at the airport. Now, all the main reporting sites I've seen up and down the valley did get at least an inch of rain going back to last evening. What I put on the board here are the water year numbers. Remember, the water year starts October 1st and goes through September 30th. Uh, our water season kind of coincides with the snowpack season. That's why we picked those dates. But anyway, so for the water year, going back to October 1, what have we done? Portland, when you melt the snow we had, this is liquid precipitation, 24.67 inches. That's pretty much normal for this time of year. I mean, we're four, technically just 42 and hundreds below normal, but we'll call that right on the button. Here's what is surprising, and I'm glad I took the time to look at this. Salem, about the same, but for Salem's average, it's actually more than four inches below normal for that site-specific McNary field. McMinnville, not as much, 21.78, more than five and a quarter inches below normal for the water year. 
Hillsboro, 23.31, more than two inches below normal. You get down into the South Valley into Eugene, under 20 inches, and nearly 10 inches below normal. So that's running way below normal. And then over at the coast, whoop, I have a typo in Astoria. Uh, AS, yeah. No, 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 that's right. I'm looking at it backwards, so it looks weird. <laughs> Astoria, 43.85. You're thinking, wow, that's a big rain number. The coast gets so much more rain than we get. But that still comes in at nearing six inches below normal. So technically, every single site is below normal. And the only one that's really close to being average is Portland. And let me make this point. I spoke back in December to the Oregon Grass Seed Growers Association. Basically, it's a bunch of farmers and people that also sell grass seed. But they shared with me the folks that live down in Albany and Eugene and the Klamath Basin. These were people from all over the state. Um, is that the southern Lama Valley and the southern third of Oregon has been trending the last several seasons on average, according to the farmers, and they know, much drier than the North Valley. And this is an example of that. Portland, nearly normal. You could drop down to Eugene, almost a 10 inch deficit. So it's going to be interesting to follow that. I've been keeping my eyes on that since those farmers kind of illuminated that topic. But if you've been wondering, where are we for the water here? Portland's okay, but generally speaking, taken as a nutshell, we still need some good soaks to catch up, right? What about the Mount Hood snowpack? This is site specific for Mount Hood. If you stuck a ruler through the snow at 5,400 feet today, where they measure at 132 inch depth, if you melted that, you'd have 44 inches plus of stored water. And that is 91% of average to date. So yeah, not 100% of normal, but 91 is pretty healthy. And we'll continue to measure the snowpack through the end of April. Um, overall, parts of Oregon are, quite a few parts of Oregon are still in drought. But if you go down the Klamath Basin, it's now considered, this is one of the drop bullseye areas, the whole Klamath Basin, south central, southeastern Oregon. Most of that area is now considered moderate drought. You go back another, a season or two ago, and they were in extreme drought conditions. So still drier than they want to be overall, but they've shown improvement. The one bullseye area for exceptional drought conditions continues to be what I would call just east of south central uh, Oregon over in Crook County is kind of the bullseye of, of all that. So um, I did talk about that in a previous video. You can scroll back and search. And I showed you the, the drought monitor where California has made big improvements. And I showed you what Oregon's doing as well on that same map. And that drought monitor hasn't changed much. So if you flip back through my videos, you'll find that. Okay, steady rain's over, shower chance continues. Cold front did pass this morning, but the rain really kept channeling along the backside of the front. See, there's an upper level trough right here. We see the little dip in the contours. There's one low, there's a second low. So we've got showers scattered this, uh, this evening, probably decreasing in numbers overnight. I think there's still a shower chance tomorrow, but we expect lots of dry weather. Then there's a second little surge of increased shower activity that comes in Tuesday overnight into Wednesday morning. I think it's possible that those showers fade out and Wednesday afternoon goes mainly dry. And then we still have that really nice warm Thursday in the forecast uh, that we've been talking about. That did show you the jet stream still ramming down into California. Did you see that? Um, let, let me go back because that's kind of interesting. There's another, here's the jet stream, 564 contour, ramming into California, big ball of moisture getting ready to hit them again. So their woes with having too much rain and too much snow continue. Okay, so this coming week, I mentioned the scattered shower chance is still alive, but if you look at rain totals potentially through the rest of the week, we're talking about little additional rain amounts, mainly some scattered showers here and there, no more big rainmakers the rest of the week. So even though you're gonna see a seven day with some scattered showers, realize I'm forecasting a lot of dry weather. And Thursday's still the day that we will have a chance <laughs> to at least make a run for 60 degrees. Again, normal right now is 57. And that's a normal average of cold days, warm days, rainy days, sunny days. So I would say a, an average sunny day this time of the year is 60. So we'll see if we can do it. Okay, forecast data for you. Light snow showers, maybe nothing to a couple inches tomorrow, one to two into Wednesday morning, and then there's that dry day on Thursday, then a little bit Friday, potentially a little bit Saturday. Snow levels, 2,000 to 3,000 tomorrow. 1,500 to 3,000 on Wednesday, and then three to 4,500, and then 4,500 Friday, and 3,000 to 3,500 Saturday. So the snow levels are something we made a big deal about last week, saying finally the snow levels were going to go back up and mainly hold in the Cascades. That still looks to be the case. You can find that updated forecast that I do myself um, 
on my Mount Hood Ski Forecast page on my weather site, which is portlandweather.com, that I'm using here behind me. Mm. Okay, so 35 to 50 degrees tomorrow. A chilly morning. I mean, if, if shower is pretty much in and we go partly cloudy with calm winds tonight, there probably will be some freezing spots in the valley. Don't be surprised if you wake up to some frosty weather. We'll carry a shower chance, but we don't expect a lot. So your outdoor plans generally tomorrow are probably in pretty good shape. Then there's that little surge of increasing showers Tuesday overnight and a Wednesday morning. The potential that that, not a guarantee, but the potential that that mostly ends for a dry afternoon. And there's Thursday. Everything puts a big high-pressure system and bam, puts it right on top of us Thursday. That's a high-confidence dry day. The only thing that can cover up sun is some frosty fog in the morning because it's going to be a light wind pattern. If we get a lot of valley fog in the morning, which we may with calm winds and freezing temperatures, then, you know, it, it would be tough to tell how quickly we would break out of the clouds and we would need a good bit of sunshine to get up to the upper 50s. So we'll see. Friday, it looks like it's a dry morning, then late day or evening showers. And then there's just a kind of a frivolous scattered shower chance into the weekend. Uh, daytime highs mostly, well, entirely, it looks like in the 50s. But all those numbers could, as I mentioned, if they all come exactly right, every single one of those days would still average below normal. That would keep our streak alive. Remember, today was day 21. Wow. Okay, thanks for uh, listening to me. I've been yakking for 11 minutes. If you haven't hit subscribe, please do so. Please tell your friends I'm trying to grow this base to make it worth my while. And um, the more it becomes worth my while, the more toys I can invest in and eventually get into some, some better and better video presentations for you. Okay, I'll talk to you tomorrow.